Hey guys, Mel the Train Tutor here again with another little bit of a simple tip for you. And this is a planning tip. Now, when we normally make watch work, war games scenery and terrain and stuff like that, what we'll do is we'll, you know, especially when it comes to hills, we'll buy a sheet of polystyrene and see how many hills we can get out of it. Now, that's perfectly fine, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. But what happens if it's the other way around? What happens if you know what hills that you want and you've got to work out how much polystyrene you need? Now, for example, this is what I'm doing right now. Now, this is a map that I've been sent here yeah, for a commission I'm working on for the Greek Battle of Independence, the Battle of Petra in 1822. I've probably got the date wrong, but Jeff will correct me on that. I'm more of a hill guy than a date guy. The hills don't change that much over the years. you know. But I've been presented with this quite hilly terrain, and I've got to work out how much materials I'm going to need to make this board. And what I'm going to do very quickly is sort of show you the technique that I use to do that. Okay, now I'm not going to do it on here, yeah, because this is a bit more involved and for a few other reasons. Yeah, so I've got an example. So let's throw that over there and then let's bring this one in. Now, what I've got here is I've drawn up this morning, what's called a quick sort of example six foot by four foot board. Now, as you can see, there's a couple of single tier hills, there's a single tier corner piece. There's two, what's called two tiered corner pieces, and then one central piece with two tiers. Okay, and I need to work out, right, how many sheets of polystyrene do I need? Yeah, now I know this is four foot by a six foot table. So what I've done is I've got a piece of tracing paper, okay? And you don't have to use tracing paper for this. Uh, if you can't get your hands on tracing paper, use uh, greaseproof paper, the stuff that they use in making cakes. Yeah, it's not as, as, as transparent as this, but it'll do. You know, you can do the job. Now, what I've done on my tracing paper is I've drawn some watch with some squares. Now, these squares are in scale with my map, and they are two foot by four foot okay and this is essentially as large as i can buy a sheet of polystyrene from b and q from okay so i know this is my working material so shall we have a look what we can do with it now what i need to do is work out how many of these hills i can get out of this piece yeah so all i'm going to do is i lay it directly over my paper yeah, and I'm looking at this corner piece right now. So let's take this large one. Remember, this is only a rough work to work out, you know, how much sort of polystyrene you're going to need. So we've got that one. And if I lift it up, you can see that out of that sheet of polystyrene, yeah, that bottom tier of that hill is going to take up that much. So what about that other tier? We can let's utilize the corner. I need to move this down, guys. Sorry. My camera needs a longer extending arm so it can actually come over the, like the center of the table rather than the top. Yeah, but we've got this one here, so let's draw that in there. Yeah, and that's that one done. Okay, uh, let's see now. We've got another tier there. Do you reckon we can fit that one in there? We probably can, so let's run that around there. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just literally working through. So what I'm going to do is quickly carry on working. Now, as you can see, I've filled up the first one. Now it's time to move on to the next one. And there you have it guys okay from this map yeah i've been able to identify exactly how many materials or how many sheets of polystyrene and for this for this sort of sample map yeah i would need approximately uh one and two thirds so two sheets okay and i'd still have all this spare yeah and that's just a really simple technique that you can use to sort of work out how much polystyrene you're going to need to build a certain map like say, you know, if, if you've got the sheet and you're just making hills, just make hills out of it, you know. But if you want to plan an actual map or plan the hills you want, this is a great simple way of just working out how many hills you can get out of a, 
I want to achieve. Now you'll notice I've, le I've left reasonable gaps in between these. Yeah, I like a little space between my hills, you know, when I'm cutting. It gives me a bit of play area. But how tight you have them, how much room you have, you know, it's down to you. You're building them after all. But this is a great planning tip. Hope you liked it, guys. If you like it, as always, throw a like on it, you know. If you've got any other tips that you think I might like along these lines, yeah, throw them in the comments. I'm always after learning, guys. If you're new to the channel, yeah, check it out. Loads of terrain tutorials. Give us a sub. And as always, if you've got any questions, throw them in the comments. I always answer my comment, guys. Right. I hope you found it useful, guys. I've got a busy day ahead of me. I've got to go buy some. I've got to figure out how many sheets I'm going to need for this, baby. Six foot by five foot table, yeah. Covered, what shall I, I'd say, easily two thirds in hills. Oh, it's going to be a beast. Right, I'll catch you later, guys. Have a good one. All the best. And ta-da.